Hey folks, welcome to another VR video. In today's video, we're not going to actually jump into VR, but I wanted to go over different options that are now available as capture tools for the Quest 2. So at this point, I typically use oculus.com slash casting because it's the easiest and most efficient way to get real-time footage from my Quest 2. But there are some other awesome options available as well, one of which just became available with version 44 of the Quest 2 software. So the first option from your Quest, you can actually select Casting, and then select Computer, and Next. And this will open up on oculus.com slash casting a casted image from your Quest 2. And as you can see, this is the square image. You can also do a widescreen crop, which will actually make it more 16 by 9. So maybe a little bit more appetizing for your viewers. But it does crop the image a bit. You can also add the headset audio and increase or decrease the volume of that audio in your capture. And add the microphone capture from the headset as well. In addition, you can make that entire widescreen crop now fit your 1080p or 16x9 window. New to version 44 of the Quest 2 software is new enhanced video capture options. So you've got the left and right eye selectable as well as image stabilization options of low, medium, and high. These will add black bars to the sides of your video. Aspect ratio of either the default square, landscape, which would be 16x9, or portrait, which would be 9x16 frame rate at 24 frames per second or 36 frames per second variable and either 5 10 15 or 20 megabit per second compression quality the compression quality will add to the file size to enable this you just go into experimental and then select advanced camera settings again you have to be on version 44. a third option is to use oculus developer hub where you have options to include either single or both eyes at resolutions that include 1024p at 36 frames per second, 1080p at 36 or 60 frames per second, 1440p at 36 or 60 frames per second, or 2160p at 36 or 60 frames per second. These are all fixed bitrate as opposed to variable bitrate. And then the bitrate can be selectable at 5 8, 25, or 40 megabit per second. That's very high quality. And it is, at a 4K render, something that even in the developer hub, if you hit save, it says resolution not optimal for gameplay. And it does, in the headset, crop the image. As you can see, this is a cropped image within the Quest 2 headset. And the final option is side quest. With SideQuest, you can stream or cast directly from your headset. You can control the bitrate, control the crop. Uh, right now it's set to the Quest 1 crop. You can also set that to Quest 2. Start in full screen, change the input, change the max frames per second or max file size. And again, the key here is, in addition to cropping it and making it look presentable, you can also change that crop to whatever you'd like. But you can also capture pass through which with some games now is a key feature can't do that with any of the official quest methods so to recap we've got four different options that i just showed you and i know there are multiple other options like air receiver and others that i've shown on the channel and that are available to users but these were the four that i feel are the most efficient and can provide the best quality to users the quest 2 is an exciting machine because it's a standalone device. It is still probably easiest if you're using Quest Link to record PC VR footage, and it's probably going to still give you the best quality. But when you're capturing standalone footage, the four options that I just gave are the ones that I feel are the best options that are available tools today. I love the fact that the MetaQuest camera team is still continuing to revise the different options. Oculus Developer Hub having those new 4K options and the advanced camera controls that just came to version 44 of the Quest firmware are showing that they haven't dropped these options and they're continuing to pursue different methods of capture 
that will show the best quality footage and put that best quality footage forward. I will say it takes a lot of time to update software because it has to also allow for fixed 90 or now 120 frames per second demands of the Quest 2. So part of the reason why there was such a delay for these advanced camera settings is that you have to make sure that there's not a trade-off there and that you're not degrading the performance of the device when you're introducing these new features. And that happens a lot with firmware updates for the Quest 2. And I have a little bit more insight than the common person because I am part of the Ambassador program. I've had the opportunity to actually work directly with the MetaQuest camera team to provide my own feedback and do some focus testing for them over the past few months to make sure that when those settings became available and went live for all users, hopefully you're going to have a stable experience. I will say the Oculus Developer Hub settings and SideQuest do require developer account with MetaQuest, so you can't just jump in, download that software, and make those changes. But if you do have a developer account, you have access to those tools and those settings. A lot of people do have developer accounts to use SideQuest for side loading as well. So those options are available, but if you don't have either of those, the in-headset advanced camera settings and the oculus.com slash casting method are both great options that allow you to share your footage, whether that be just in your house with friends or to others outside through YouTube, Twitch, or other means. You can also, and I didn't capture this particular function, share by casting to your mobile device, as long as your mobile device is running the new MetaQuest app or the old not yet changed name Oculus app. Same app, sometimes depending on your device, it may have already updated to say MetaQuest. Previously, it said Oculus. I wish that Oculus name was still there, but unfortunately it is starting to fade away. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it helps to inspire others to capture their own VR content. I'll be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR for yourself. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.